To me, Global Reach Out is inspiring. It's connecting with God, reaching out to the world, and impacting life. The stories that I shared is so personal and it deeply impacted me. Global Reach Out to me is reach out to the truth. Connecting hearts, connecting lives. You're listening to Global Reach Out. Welcome back to part two of chapter eight, A Father Provide Security. In this second part, I will elaborate further on the kind of atmosphere we bring home. You know, the world needs a father movement. It's about bringing heaven home. The natural question is therefore, is our home a reflection of heaven or is it hell on earth? Now, this may sound funny to you, but the question is a serious one. The litmus test of whether our home is a safe place is how our children feel about daddy coming home. Do we come home with a happy smile or a tired and haggard look? Or do we give off angry vibes? Now, let me tell you my own experience. When my children were much younger, they would sometimes tell my wife this, I want Papa to come home early. That is whenever I have to work late. Well, that surely warms my heart because it speaks about their desire to see me for my company, for my hearts, and for my silly play with them. However, it wasn't the same when I was growing up. As a young boy, I remember that I would be kept awake, waiting for, in fear for my father to come home. If he was back early, I would somehow be relieved. On the other hand, if he came home late, I would be trembling with fear. Why? Because I know all hell will break loose. Because my father would most certainly be coming home drunk and things would turn ugly. Martin Luther King once said, as leaders, we need to be a thermostat and not a thermometer. Now, what did he mean by that? We first need to know the difference between a thermostat and a thermometer. A thermometer measures temperature. In contrast, a thermostat sets the temperature, very much like how the remote control of an aircon sets the temperature of the room. If it's too warm or too cold, we simply adjust the temperature accordingly. Now, too often, mothers are the ones who set the emotional temperature in the house more frequently than fathers. Daniel Goleman, in his book, The New Leader, said, the leader is the most dominant ingredient in the emotional soup. If fathers are leaders in our household, then we do have the responsibility to become the most dominant ingredient in the home atmosphere. We must provide an emotionally secure home environment where our children can feel safe, relax, have fun, and live open lives. Like it or not, the energy and the vibes that Father display have great influence on the people around us. Following from this reasoning, the negative behaviors of Father, whether our temper outbursts, our disapproving roots, our passive redrawal, or our emotional coldness, are often the reason why the brain-body system is not optimized for successful performance. Now, this brings me to the concept of resonance. Research has shown that leaders create resonance in the team of followers that they lead. The tone that leaders set will become the resonating tone among those who follow them. Do you know that between 50 to 70% of how employees perceive the organization's climate is determined by the emotional tone that leaders set? That would mean that leader is the group's emotional guide, 
driving the collective emotion of the group through resonance. Just like how Charlie Brown, the boy in this picture, who showers love to his pet dog, Snoopy. Likewise, Snoopy learns how to shower his love for his good friend, Woodstock. The energy, the good energy, just go round and round. The emotion that people feel either grew the group together or it can make the group fall apart. Imagine people who work together in a toxic environment with a demanding and critical vo voice where no effort is ever good enough. Now, this environment creates the deadly cocktail of distrust, discord, and disharmony within the team. Surely, unhappy employees will affect the overall performance of the organization. So in summary, great leaders set the emotional climate. If we want to be good fathers, we must also be great leaders in our homes. We must remind ourselves to be the thermostat in setting the right emotional temperature in our family. Unfortunately, most fathers don't realize the importance of this. Without intentionality, our homes may become an unpleasant place of discomfort, anxieties, and sadness. Instead, with intentional effort, we can turn our homes into a happy hormone factory that can be a joy to live in. Sit back and relax and watch this short video with me. Si no le ayuda la fábrica, el cañón le da. El tú me daba mi saco y me caía el suelo. Yo ya cogía los tacos los rastrados. Did you smile? Did you laugh as you watched this? I sure did. Even though we don't know what the characters are laughing about. You know, laughter is contagious. The saying that laughter is the best medicine is not without its reason. It's very much grounded in neuroscience studies. Do you know that there is a secret recipe to serving a happy hormone cocktail at home? Father's emotional state directly affects our children. At least five uh, hormone secretion are affected. Let me take you through them briefly. Do you know that there are mirror mu neurons in our brain that play a major part in determining the emotional climate? When I see you smiling, my mirror neurons for smiling fire up as well. Father can nurture an environment that is conducive for the secretion of the happiness cocktail comprising of oxytocin, which is simply the love hormone, dopamine, the pressure hormone, and serotonin, the mood stabilizer. The love hormone creates feelings of contentment, calmness, and security. It is secreted through physical touch and inspiring words. From time to time, I will give my children a good tight squeeze and whisper gently into their ears. You are my precious child. We whom I'm well pleased. Sometimes my son will respond by saying, you are my father with whom I'm well pleased too. Oh, such warm fuzzy feelings. The pressure hormone is linked to reward-motivated behavior. Constant affirmation and celebration of our children for who they are builds up higher levels of dopamine. This in turn stimulates their creative thinking. The third hormone, the mood stabilizer, is secreted 
when we focus on positive things, which helps to reduce anxiety. You know, once in a while, my wife and I will encourage everyone to say appreciative and affirmative things to each other. You must see how our two children will always pay attention to what each one of us has to say about them. A smile will light up on their face when each affirmation is being given to them. When they're so pleased to be served the happy hormone cocktail. Finally, the two remaining hormones are the immunoglobulin or IgA in short. This hormone plays a big role in immunization against sickness. Do you know that when you are negative or angry for just more than five minutes, your body stops to secrete IgA and you are prone to illness. Perhaps the Bible has health benefits in mind when it encourages us not to let the sun go down on our anger. On the other hand, the excess secretion of cortisol or the stress hormone also weakens our immunity, making us feeling tired easily and it impairs our judgment and our concentration. Do you want this unhealthy situation for yourself or your family? I am sure not. So as we conclude part two, these are some food for thought. Firstly, what is the dominant emotion we find ourselves often displaying in our home? Do we laugh often? Are we easily upset? Or simply emotionally distant. Secondly, how do you think your children and your wife feel about you coming home at the end of the day? I will see you soon in part three. For now, thank you for listening in. The program is proudly presented by Global Reach Out. We welcome you to share our live enriching webcasts with family and friends through our website, global-reachout.org. Let's reach out to bless more lives together.